Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to do a replay of a tutorial that we did several years ago about how to use fat quarters and yardage to create reusable fabric gift wrap. Courtney, um, who is our video editor, did this tutorial a long time ago when she was our knitting instructor. Now she is on with us full time and edits all of these videos for you. So she was ahead of the curve before this was a super trendy thing. So she shows you how you can hem the edges of your fat quarter bundle in order to create reusable gift wrap, shows you some of the wrapping techniques. So that way you can wrap your smaller items up in there. Now any Christmas line will work for this or holiday line because um, I know there are holidays other than Christmas that are celebrated this time of year but it's a great way to be more environmentally conscious about how much you are waste you're putting out there I know it always makes me sad to see so many trash bags full of um, paper going out on Christmas morning so I might have to do this myself if I can find some time this year and re you can reuse it year after year and also um, we have a collection here that was designed by Gazal Razivi for our Figo Fabrics. I have known Gazal for several years now but I actually got to meet her in person for the first time at Quilt Market so that was really fun to see people in person again um, this past week and it was but she designed this collection specifically with fabric gift wrap in mind. So there's some really beautiful metallics in it that make it sparkly. And I don't know about you guys, but the older I get, the more I like to have a coordinated looking tree. So I really like it when all of the fabric or all the gift wrap underneath looks like it belongs together and that you can have this cohesive look. And I know that sounds so stupid, but I just like the older I get, the more I become like my aunt who always used to like wrap everything in white with these really pretty bows and it looks so beautiful and professionally done. And I'm just, I'm enjoying that part of life now. I have reached that stage of adulthood where I like it to just like a cohesive thing. So that is really fun for me to do. So I might need to make some of this up as well. So this one could be red or it could be pink. It really kind of depends what you put it next to on what it reads. Um, but it's this really pretty mottled background with darker circles and then a gold metallic. And it feels really nice. You know how some metallic just doesn't feel good? This one does. And so it will be really fun to sew with. Now this purple print is so pretty and we absolutely can say purple is a holiday color color and then we have these really pretty tiny little metallic gold stars going throughout it and I love it because we have a solid stripe alternating with one that kind of has a little bit of um, dimension to it and again it has that textured purple background to add dimension and I just love how it would just be such a colorful tree if you used all of this and it would just be this little sparkles of gold and silver popping to make everything shine. Here's that circle print again, this time with a nice lilac background. Again, it's still that textured background. This just goes to show you that it doesn't just have to be during the holidays that you could make this up for, although you certainly could put this under your tree this year, but this could totally work for Easter or just an anniversary or something else. Now this collection really has a good rainbow of colors, but it's a really rich rainbow. So I really love this blue. And again, that gold metallic just makes everything sparkly and shiny. Here's that stripe print again, this time in a deep blue, so it really makes those stars sparkle. I really love this X print. It really is just three or four colors of green, but the little X's here and there are metallic, and so it's just this little sparkle adding dimension to it. It's really pretty. Here's that same print in yellow and gold. Here's a stripe print again, but this time in orange with, again, that gold metallic. To me, this one just screams Merry Christmas. I think this would be a good one to get yardage of so that you could have some big sacks and some bigger gift wrap to go around as well. Here's that little cross print again, this time with the gray background and the silver metallic. This is not normally a combination I gravitate to, but I think it looks really good in this instance. And we are going to wrap it up with the circle print, uh, this time with a black modeled background. And the silver here is not metallic, but the gold is. Well, I hope you've enjoyed taking another look at Bijou by Gazal Razivi for Figo Fabrics. She's a very talented designer. She also does a lot in the background of Figo to help make it as fabulous as it is. We'll have to have her on here someday. We keep talking about doing it and then 
schedules just get a little crazy on my end more than hers. But we'll have to have her on so you can listen to her story. Um, but again, this collection was specifically designed with fabric gift wrap in mind. Great eco-friendly choice that you can use year after year. But we also have lots of holiday collections that you could use as well, especially if you are looking for something for kids. We have some that will work fabulously for that. All right, let's get into the tutorial so you guys can learn how to make your own fabric gift wrap to use this holiday season and for many years to come. All right, so we've got everything laid out. You're gonna square it up first, right? Yes, so you obviously wanna get rid of the, um, what is that called? Selvage. Selvage, thank you. We're learning terms. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous dinner, very creative. <laughs> You're in good hands. Give me something. Me. Okay, so we gotta cut off the selvage because that won't, that won't turn under very nicely. So I'm just gonna give it a nice straight edge on the other side of the selvage. Sure it went okay, there we go. And then you just keep turning and squaring it up. From turning there. and squaring, that's it. Yep. So you're not going to any specific size. You're just kind of No, no, the, know, the squaring exact up. size doesn't matter so much as the fact that it's straight. That's what you want most to get your um, your seams or your um, hems correct. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this side. And I'm taking off about a half an inch from each side just because that's the size of the selvage and it gives me a nice little, um, a nice straight line. You know, if you try to get too close to the edge, you might also be cockeyed a little bit. So you want it to be straight. All right, so do you press first? How I, do you do your hems? I do press. I do what I learned on YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Yay. You learn so much on YouTube. So I just like to turn it under about a half an inch because I want to do a quarter inch hem. So I'm going to turn it under a half an inch and then I'll turn it under again a, a quarter inch so that's a total quarter. Everything's tucked in and nice and then I'll press that straight. All right. And this does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to fit any particular thing or body. So if it's a little off, it's not a big deal. We're not doing heirloom sewing, it's okay. No, or you know, you don't have to worry about any points that line up or anything like that, so it's all good. I like to do the, the half inch press first and then finish with the second turn under. That way nothing kind of scoots around on me and it's, it's gonna be as straight as it is without using a, um, a seam ruler. That's what that thing's called, right? It is, okay. or a gauge. There you go, seam gauge, yes. Mm -hmm. Knitters like gauge. Or if you I, mine is never correct. This is my problem. Your gauge, yes. We're going to work on that. We though. talked about that. We're going to work on that. My, we'll see. My aunt, who taught me how to knit her um, handle on Ravelry, is do you want it to fit? Because she is the gauge queen. And she always says if you want something to fit, you need to have the proper gauge. Okay, so I'm just turning this second part under so that it's a quarter inch give or take. All right, so let's do the second side Slip and then we'll do off. a miter. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. Oops, get that straight first. There we go. Do you like that mat to measure by? I do, and I have basically the same thing at home. Mine is square, I believe we sell it in the shop. We do. Um, and uh, so mine, mine's square, and this is how I do this so I don't have to get out of the seam gauge or my ruler. I'm kind of lazy because, um, you know, I like things to be, be kind of quick, which yeah. is funny for a knitter, I think, you know. It is, to think it that takes a should. long time. But you're a very <laughs> fast knitter. I, I am pretty fast. It still takes me a while to complete a sweater, but um, not months. Let's just well, say that. This is called the June Taylor Cut and Press. Um, it comes in two sizes. and. Mm -hmm. I, you normally see me with the smaller one, which is the one that you have at home. Mm -hmm. And I had got a question in the last video, why do you keep flipping your cutting mat over? It's because it's an ironing surface on one side and a cutting surface on the other. So if you have limited space or if you're like Courtney and you like to just have something to go by, mm -hmm. this is really handy to have. I use it whenever I'm sewing at home because I have limited space. I know you do too. Yes, I do. You when know. I found out about this product, I was like, oh my gosh, I need one right now. Yes. <laughs> well, we both have kids and kids come with lots of things mm -hmm. and it just takes over everything. And so the more compact your things can be, the better. Exactly. So to do my mitered corners, what I do is after I've pressed all the sides and you can kind of see this little square here in the middle, I'm gonna cut straight across that to get some, rid of some of that bulk. It's right where the ruler is. I actually cut farther in. Do you? I do. Um, I cut 
Here. Well, here, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I cut here. And so then, when you're doing this, and maybe this is wrong in Quilt World, then when you're doing this and you turn it in, oh, gotta get that first. So you've turned this in. Let me get my hands out of the way. Okay, so. Do you want to iron? Yes, let's iron that out. Okay. Bit. Let's get that a little pressed. There we go. Okay, so you, you cut that guy, and then you've got your, your point coming in from your lines of uh, pressing. You turn it over at that line, and then you turn your seams or your hems back over and it turns into a nice, that's my hands get out of the way, a nice mitered corner. And you can pin that to help keep it in mm -hmm. place. That works really well too. Yep. So we've got all the four corners done mm -hmm. and we have set the sewing machine up for a quarter inch stitch and then we move the needle over even further. So it is the furthest position to the right that it can go. Mm -hmm. So it should stitch at an eighth of an inch seam which is right in between to give you like a nice little top stitch. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna make sure my pins aren't gonna be too much in the way. I like to leave my pins in until I am ready to sew just so that nothing moves around. Now on your machine, will that flat one be okay right there? It should be. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this all lined up and I'm gonna do two stitches back for a back stitch at the beginning. I like just to turn my corners as I come, so that'll be the only back stitch that we have to do. Now that I have that secured, I'm gonna take out my uh, first pin and go ahead and start moving. There we go. Here's is a little. than mine. Do you want me to slow it down for you? That's good. I got it now. Okay. We actually probably could have done it. There are speed uh, controls on the new Baby Loft Jubilant. Yes. So that's always nice. There we go. And we probably could have gone with a quarter inch here. If, you, if you're a really, like, this is not a familiar sh machine to me, so I like having a little bit of extra space if my line's not perfectly straight. But if you wanted to get really, really, really close to that um, edge of your hem, you could and, and get as close as possible and just stitch very straight. I feel like this is also a really good time to use some of those decorative stitches that come with a machine. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Because you could really have something really pretty that could then be double-sided. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on the, the wraps that you do or the, um, the way that you end up wrapping your gift, you may be seeing quite a bit of these bottom parts of the seam, especially too, so uh, it might be a good idea. And tell me about how you pin, because instead of pinning it across, you've kind of pinned straight. I pin it straight. I tried to print it across, um, because I know that that usually keeps things a little bit more stable, but because of how small the hem is, it, it just was very difficult for me. So I ended up pinning with the pins going along the hem instead of uh, perpendicular to it. So I'm gonna get down here to the final thing, readjust my corner a little bit to make sure it's gonna be closed. And I'm going to stop when I get to the point where I am an eighth of an inch in. Lift up my presser foot and turn. And then I'll realign and I'll be able just to keep on going straight down the other side without having to do any more back stitching or any adjustments. While she's finishing, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the fat quarter bundles that we have. We have the Robert Kaufman fat quarter bundle. These are batiks. It's called Artisan Batik Snowflakes. They're really pretty. They've got lots of deep blues and some medium and then also some white in there as well. So these are really pretty. They would make a great coordinated gift set. We also have the Lori Holt 2018 Christmas bundle. It's called Cozy Christmas. And it's really cute. It's got these cute little gingerbread men. It's got the uh, lights that she is sewing with now. That and was what got me. It's so cute. It's adorable. It's so fun. The gingerbread men are cute too, but they the are lights cute. are just, I like the really colors. vintage. I feel like the whole thing is vintage-y. Yeah, the bells too. Uh, yes. They, uh, anyway, the whole thing. Yes, it's, it's super cute. Um, and we've got those as well. We have a bunch of those. 
And then we have Winter Love um, by Marsha. I'm gonna say this wrong. I'm not even gonna pronounce her last name, it's bad. But Clothworks makes it. And these are really cute too. There's some penguins that are little lovebirds. And there's also some like little snowflakes and some snow mountain scenes. They're just really cute. So we've got lots of fat quarter bundles to choose from still mm -hmm. for the holidays and they're just fun. And you finished. I'm done. Let's hold it up. Okay. So it's just, I mean, it is a fat quarter, just slightly smaller. But and it is just got your edges turned under and it looks really mm -hmm. cute. Yeah. And we get to trim extra. a seam or a little extra. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at it on the overhead camera. That looks really cute. Yeah. And do you give this a press at all at this point? At this point, you can. I usually don't mm -hmm. um, because it's already been pressed before I sewed it. And if, if it was a garment, I definitely probably would. But um, I think it's flat enough at this point. This is when you could add your ribbon to mm -hmm. it if you want. But if you also want to just have some pretty long lengths of ribbon and, and use it like you would a regular wrapping paper, you know, sometimes you can buy like little wrapping paper rectangles mm -hmm. and just use those to wrap. You can do the exact same thing with this and then tie it with a bow or a ribbon and it's cool. good to go. So now we're going to show you, or Courtney is, because she's, she's the star of the show, I'm just here today, um, how to do some of this wrap because we were just talking like, how do you do this without tape? And mm -hmm. apparently you can use tape if yes. you want. Yes, if you wanted to use it to secure it. So I I like crisp corners on my, on my presents. I, I am a little OCD and I want it to look perfect. So if you really want it to look perfect, you could use tape to hold it together. Um, if you want to go as fast as possible, then you could just use ribbon or there are a few different um, sort of traditional furoshiki, I think that's how you pronounce it, techniques where um, you can use absolutely nothing. You either tie it together or you tuck it. Okay, okay. so let's try. Let's okay. do the ribbon first. Okay, so. This is super simple, and this is another one where I attached the ribbon. It's got the cute little men there. So if you have the ribbon attached, it can actually... She has some quilt gifts, by the way, yes. inside. These are little birch socks and machiner's quilting gloves. Both yes. awesome for your quilting fronts. So if you want to, and because it's been folded already, it's a little... It's a little Folded. Wrinkled. <laughs> wrinkled. Um, so if you have the ribbons attached, you have to decide which way is going to be best for them to fit around the gift when it's done. If you don't have the, the ribbons attached, you should be um, okay to do either which way because you're just going to add the ribbons at the end. So I'm just going to fold over each side here like so and just like on a regular package, I'd tuck this one under to give it like a nice crisp seam basically right down the middle. Then I'm going to take these sides where the ribbon's coming out that I attached and make a point. And so I'll do that on both sides. So it's just your normal miter. Yep, just, yep, just miter quarter or just the exact same way you would wrap a regular present really. Because then you would take this and fold it under and usually you'd tape it. And then we'll take this and fold it under and then on a regular package you would tape that. But on this one, we're gonna take the ribbons and kind of pass them over each other. Flip the entire thing over like that, and then we're going to tie bow. I like to just to do a regular uh, knot. I don't like to do a square knot here or anything like that because it would just take that much longer for somebody to open the present, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be mean. So yeah. I'm just going to wrap a regular, a regular bow. It'll hold everything together well enough, and it'll be really easy for them to undo and then for you to package up for the next time you need it. So that is it. And it's adorable. I think it. That uh, would look I really like cute it. under the tree. And you can use, um, this is just some grow grain ribbon that I had at home from another project, to be honest, because it matched so nicely with all I of the things. I think we all have ribbon yeah. and random crafting supplies yeah. so that if we you have wanted some to use and didn't. Satin ribbon, or I had some left over from my wedding 13 years ago that it, it was um, sheer and really pretty and when it ties into a bow, it looks really nice. Whatever you've got will work. I feel like if you really, like if you were doing this for a quilty friend who would really appreciate it, you could reuse the ribbons that they come on. Oh yeah. That could be fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> that could be fun. Okay, so that is if you have ribbon or string, if you're a knitter, you can use yarn, you know, all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. If you don't have any of the above, but you have got your um, fat quarter wrapping cloth, you can do it anyway. And pardon the wrinkles, everybody, because this has been wrapped up. You could take it, and you always want to do it sort of at the, at the, on the bias. Mm -hmm. You could take it, and you can take the corners and tie them into uh, a knot. Then that's what I did with, like the, with the big one. Yep. So I did I did two of the corners and I wrapped them. I passed the other two 
corners underneath the first one I just tucked under, the second one I wrapped around to make it look into a nice little bow. Um, and you can probably find plenty of videos and instructions online. Yeah, it's really, really easy. And then you don't need any sort of fastening whatsoever. If you want it to look a little bit nicer, mm -hmm. you can do um, sort of a tuck technique where you're gonna take one corner and wrap it over. And traditional wrapping claws are gonna be square and you're probably gonna have a rectangle, but it will still work. Uh, I'm gonna tuck this part under here and kind of try to crisp up the corner as much as I can. It's a little awkward. There we go. Then I'm gonna take the sides and I'm gonna kind of do like I would on a present. I don't know if you guys can see this, where you kind of tuck it into the box and then I'm gonna take it up over the top and kind of bring it across so that it is straight as I can. And then it has a nice crisp corner here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna turn it this way so I can actually reach it and bring it up and across like that. I'm gonna tuck this guy underneath so he stays out of the way. And then this very last part, I'm gonna bring up to the top and I'll kind of adjust it a little bit so that it kind of comes down. And then this whole thing just gets tucked up and inside. This works really nicely on books, small boxes, anything that um, is rigidly square. So what's the largest that you could wrap with a fat quarter? With a fat quarter, you could get a smaller garment box, so like something like this. If it's a big garment box, you would have a little bit of gapping mm -hmm. uh, on the sides. But so anything that you have been able to fold into a particular size or is a book size or smaller, most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and other things you may, instead of putting it in the box. this big one was just a with the fabric cut square, right? Yes. And this, this is big. Yeah, but you would never fit anything see. small into that because it would just be too much fabric. Yeah. So having a, a couple of different sizes is nice. I feel like this is also a good way to use your yardage. Definitely. But if you're someone, like I know my aunt is one of them, who likes their bottom of their tree to look like it belongs in a magazine, you could get like all the coordinated ones and they could look just fabulous underneath there. Exactly, and that's sort of what I was thinking with the fat bundle that I bought mm -hmm. um, because I thought, oh, they'll all go together and yeah. then I'll have a few oddballs with, with the larger pieces. We don't have any left of this. This sold out over Black Friday, but we do still have some case left um, from that same collection, which is really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of changes colors of green to red, so that would be fun. Mm -hmm. um, this is a woven fabric, so it cuts a little differently if you want it to be square. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna show you how to do that real quick because you have to rip it. So it's, it's very fun. very satisfying. It, it's very <laughs> satisfying. Um, but because it's a woven, that means that normal quilting cotton, mm -hmm. the design is like printed directly onto the fabric. And so it's not necessarily in line with the grain, but mm -hmm. when fabric is woven, it is literally has a grain. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that has a stripe, like the check that we, she used here, or um, this other one here, if you want it to be straight, you've got to rip it. So mm -hmm. we'll show you how to do that. It's, it's, it's very fun. So, so you've already, it looks like you've already done this side. Let's get out of the way. Yes, this side is left over from this big piece that I did, but you can see that this side is very cattywampus. So we are gonna need to straighten that one up. And so all I'm gonna do is make a little cut on the side. And I like to get it as close as I can on one side, um, but you could also start at the big side. Maybe that'll be nicer so we can actually see it. So it goes straight down this sort of orange part to the other end. So it goes straight down here. So I'm just gonna cut right on the side of that orange part, maybe, I don't know, half inch in. Not even. it's gonna get a little fuzzy on the edges when you do this. Mm -hmm. So give yourself a little bit extra space. So yeah, so I've got, I've got a pretty good little snip there. And I'm going to take it and grab each side and pull it. I know, that sounds awful, <laughs> but now let's look. We'll see how nice and, and straight it is. So if you have ever been like, how do I get this thing straight? Like don't do it on printed cotton because mm -hmm. it doesn't work um, the same. You've gotta trim that, but if you mm -hmm. have a woven, this is what you do to get it squared up really mm -hmm. easily. And now it's gonna be perfectly square and even with the straighter grain. If we measured this, it would be perfectly 90 degrees. Yes. So that's really Sometimes exciting. Sometimes you end up with a little bit of extra strength. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Um, so we can do that on each of these sides. It'll be square. 
And actually, it looks like that was the only side that really needed it. So then you can do the exact same thing we just did on the fat quarter, and you're good to go with a large square. This is not even as big as the one on our package here. Um, but I still it will, think you could get quite a bit out of it, though. Oh, yeah. This this yeah. will be perfect for this size, which is not even width of fabric. This is half a width, I think. Mm -hmm. right? um, this would be good for a garment box. So okay. just like you know, giving somebody a, a shirt that you bought at the store, came in a box, this will wrap it. Sounds good. All right, and we did talk a little bit about you could do this for times other than the holidays. <laughs> we pulled one that we thought would look really cute as a birthday gift. Yes. This is Galaxy, kind of. It's a digital print. This one, let's see what it's called officially. It's called Intensity. The yeah. SKU number is 18169-195 Bright. We'll link it below. But it's really cute. It uh, sort of has a galaxy theme, so that would be really fun for a kid's birthday mm -hmm. or anybody who's super into sci-fi. I think that would be fun. Um, those digital panels that you don't know what to do with, like you can always just center the bottom of it on here and then it would look really neat. It would be adorable. Yes. Yeah. All right. Have we forgotten anything? I don't think so. Okay. It's almost, it's almost impossible to go wrong. Okay, <laughs> it is. All right, so we've got everything you need to make this over at shop.quiltatexonymous.com. All you need are some fat quarters, so you can use your stash, or you can get ones that all coordinate together so you can have a really pretty coordinated Christmas tree. Thank you very much to Courtney for sharing this fun idea with us yeah. and being a guest star. Uh, well, star. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go follow her on Instagram. Make her a star. It'll be fun. <laughs> And then you'll see videos of how fast she knits and be like, oh my God, how is that possible? Because <laughs> that's what I think. But thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. It was fun. All right. So until next time, happy quilting and knitting. <laughs>